I'm sure you've seen all the videos of people wearing kimonos in Japan. I tried it and let me tell you all about it. It was inspired by Chinese Hanfu in the Tang Dynasty and involved in the Japanese style by the Heian period. There are many different styles of kimono that reflect the wearer's social status and occasion. There is the furuso, a formal kimono worn by young unmarried women during coming of age ceremonies. There is the humongi, which is a semi formal for weddings and tea ceremonies, and the hiki zuri, which is worn by geishas. There is also an informal type of kimono, which is the yukata. It is a lightweight cotton kimono for summer. It's also given to guests at traditional rukan stays and it can be worn as bath wear or sleep wear. And you can also wear a tandem or hurry on top. Now, the parts of the kimono, usually you have the inner layer, the hanari, then you have the kimono, then you have the obiagi which is an obi sash that kind of ties around the waist then you have the obi which is the belt that goes over and it's tied in the back with a bumki knot and keeps the waist small and the posture straight finally you have the obi jime which is the decorative string you can see the yellow and green flower on top you also wear the tabi, which are split toe socks to make it easier to wear the zori, which are the sandals. And then you also have a cargo, which is the small purse. You can do your hair in like a braid or a bun. You also add the kanzashi, which is the hair ornament. So when you're wearing it, here's some things to keep in mind to wear it properly. You should always wear a nagajuban under the kimono, which is like the undergarment. Always tie the left side over the right. Wear white tabby socks before putting on the kimono because it's hard to bend down. And show the back of the neck with the collar. And always wear your obi in the back. Kimono patterns also hold a lot of symbolism, so you should choose them carefully. I chose the red colour to match with the autumn leaves. It also symbolised youth and glamour during the Edo period since the colour faded quickly. Red also brings luck, happiness and prosperity. And the flower is the peony which is the king of the flowers and brings wealth and bravery. Now, some reasons that you should wear the kimono. The first is cultural immersion and appreciation. Wearing the kimono allows you to immerse yourself in the country's rich cultural heritage. And also wearing the clothes with respect, you can show your appreciation for Japanese culture, customs and craftsmanship. The second reason to wear it is to make a meaningful connection with history. The kimono has a long history dating over a thousand years. So wearing it, you can have a connection between the generations that have come before. It's like stepping back in time and becoming part of the Japanese history and experiencing it from a different perspective. Another reason is celebrating special occasions and festivals. Kimono are often worn to significant life events and traditional festivals. For me, I had my own coming of age day, the Seijin Nohi, to celebrate reaching the age of maturity. You will also feel very beautiful and very elegant when you wear the kimono and gives you a sense of sophistication. I felt very pretty and very radiant like a completely new person. Finally, you have a unique photo opportunity to take amazing photos for Instagram in the iconic Japanese setting and you also have beautiful memories that you can look back on. Let's talk about how much it costs. So for renting, it costs around 4,000 to 5,000 yen or 40 to 50 AUD. They will charge extra for hairstyle, makeup and photo shoots. And if you're buying it, it's around 10,000 to 13,000 yen or 100 to 137 AUD. I also bought a basic yukata as a souvenir. 
Here are some places to go to get the best photos. I would recommend going to Fushimi Inari. You definitely have to go to Kiyomizu Dero, Yasaka Koshundo. They have the most colourful background. And you also have Marayama Park. We just walked around and also just walking along the streets. Some extra tips. Always wear the kimono with respect. It's not a costume, it is a piece of clothing. Go early in the morning if you want to avoid the crowds in your photos. You can hire a photographer or you can get your mum to take photos like I did. The shoes can be a little uncomfortable to walk in so I would recommend choosing a rental shop that's close to where you want to be. And also don't bring too much stuff to carry in the purse because it won't fit and also you have to leave your clothes at the rental place. Now that you have all this information, I hope you have a wonderful experience wearing the kimono and stay tuned for my next video talking more about my experience. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And if you would like to see more from me, follow me on my social medias at Alice Adventure. Bye.